Hello everyone, um, this is a tutorial on how to configure PFSense for multiple public IP addresses to work um, for various devices on your internal network. So if your your, I, your um, ISP has given you sort of um, four static IP addresses, eight static IP addresses, 16, this is just a tutorial on how to configure those to work with PFSense um, for your various uh, servers and things like that. So various web servers, exchange server, things like that. Right, first thing to do is to go into the WAN configuration, make sure that's correct. I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about this really quick. So basically we enter our description. This is our WAN interface. Make sure we've configured this correctly. Um, configured for static. Now, I obviously live in the UK. So here in the UK, my ISP is B, B there broadband. Um, I know certainly for B and for Zen internet, um, the way they route their public IP addresses to you are um, basically, as far as I know, they're routed sort of directly to you. So you have to put your router or your modem into bridged mode, fully bridged mode. Um, so what I have had to do is to configure the modem, uh, the router that they supplied with me uh, to function in bridged mode and effectively becomes an extension of their network. Um, and I then have to ensure that I've configured this one section correctly. So what I will do is I would configure the IP address to be one of the static IP addresses they've given me in the range. So they would give you something like, this is just purely an example, 10.0.1.1, 10.0.1.2, 10.1.0.3, and so on and so forth. Um, and those are, that's the range that's available for me to use as public IP addresses. One of those is assigned to your PFSense box. Um, so you'll lose one there. Um, and obviously you select the subnet mask bit count here and make sure that's correct um, and for the gateway this is where it gets a bit confusing for people some people anyway um, you have to set your gateway um, when you've configured that that's obviously configured from over here the routing section to be the gateway that's defined by your ISP it's not one of the public IP addresses they've given you um, in some cases it may be within the same range it may not um, in my ISP's case it's in a slightly different range um, to the public IP addresses they've set me um, so that's one thing to check it, it really depends on how your ISP routes the IP addresses to you I have had to configure mine with the gateway that my ISP has supplied me with um, for this to work correctly. So, we've done that. Once we've got this all configured correctly, hit save obviously, go over to our firewall, and then virtual IPs. Now I've already added a few sort of to save a bit of time, but I'll go through how you add these. Here is basically where you add your various public IP addresses assigned by your ISP. So that's my second in the range assigned to me third in the range, fourth in the range. So I'll show you how to create those. So I'm just going to edit this just, just, just for ease of speed. Um, again, this is how I've configured the setup to work for me. This might not be the standards way of configuring PFSense to do this. Um, again, this is, this is what seems to work for me and seems to give me the best results. Um, I'm assuming this is the correct way of doing it um, based on the documentation and things like that. This, this is how I've done it. So you pick IP alias. Um, you then enter the IP address, one of the public IP addresses that's been assigned to you by your ISP. In my case, this is second in the range. Then be sure to specify the bit count, subnet mask, that that is in. Then enter a description for that. So in this case, that's public IP address number two. Hit save. You then go in um, and create the next public IP address um, for your next alias. So you create that. That's the third IP address in my range of public IP addresses. Give that a description as well. Um, public IP number three, just for ease. And once you've once you've configured all of those, just hit apply changes, and that applies it. Um, obviously, um, this is how you can get your PFSense box to to recognise all of your public IP addresses. But um, because the way they we're bridging the public IP addresses, you could have multiple um, multiple physical firewalls, multiple physical instances of PFSense, um, multiple virtual instances of PFSense, um, each with a different public IP address, but for virtual IP sake, they're all configured within the PFSense interface. Right, I can appreciate I'm rambling on a little bit here. Once we've configured our virtual IP addresses, we head into firewall, then we head into NAT, we go to one-to-one -to -one NAT, and 
just give you a quick explanation on what this is. Basically, what we are doing here is adding a one-to-one -one NAT mapping for your virtual IPs, so your public IP addresses, to an internal device on your network, so your various servers. So you'd have Web Server 1, Web Server 2, um, and maybe Exchange, uh, Web Access, uh, maybe a telephony system to have web access, um, help desk system, things like that. Um, so we have to create mappings for each of our public IP addresses to be mapped specifically to an internal server, an internal IP address on our network. I'll show you how you do that. So you go in, you're creating the first one. It's obviously on our WAN interface. It's our public IP address. Here you enter the first public IP address um, that you've defined, your first virtual IP address. So that's the second one in my range to be assigned to internal IP address which is this internal IP address but obviously your IP addresses will vary depending on how you've configured your PFSense um, this is the internal IP address I've used which would be my first web server uh, internal IP description web server 01 hit save now what you have to do is you have to do that for each of your devices you want to have a public IP address so for your second one that's the second public IP address in my range, 1.3. Um, the internal IP address is a different internal IP address, my second web server's IP address. And you then give it the description, web server 02, save. So you do that for each of your public IPs you want to map to your internal device on your network. Hit apply changes, and that's saved. Now, this is where it gets confusing for some people. Usually, in PFSense 2.0, when you want to configure port forwards and you want to forward the various ports to your different devices, your different servers, you would usually, or even just if you have one sort of public IP address, you go into port forward, you add them from here, and it will then add the firewall rules for you. Because we're doing one-to-one -one mappings, mappings rather, <laughs> you don't want to do that. You want to configure them manually. So you add the one-to-one -one NAT rules, you go into firewall, go into rules, and we add them from here. I've added a few as an example. We can just ignore the second one because that was configured incorrectly. So we'll just remove that for now. So what we do is we go in and we add these firewall rules manually. So we're going to edit this. It's on our WAN interface, the rule. Whatever the protocol is you're using, so TCP. Haven't configured the source box, don't configure that. The destination is your IP address of the device you want to forward the ports to. So for our first public IP address, it's going to our internal IP address of our first web server. We want ports to be forwarded for that. Therefore, we enter the IP address of our web server, first web server. This is on port 80, predefined here in the PFSense dropdown, HTTP. We then give it a description. It's HTTP access for our first web server, our first web server. So once we have done that, um, we then save it and we add the next firewall rule for our next device. So again, this is the WAN interface, TCP. Um, we're not going to configure the source. It's a single host or alias and it's going to be the IP address of our next next public web server. So I think that was dot .12. This also is going to be listening on pub 80 port 80 because it's on a different public IP address. It's also listening on port 80. I could select HTTP from the drop down here, but this is me just making sure I've got the right port. You can set it to log the packets if you want. And this is HTTP access for my second web server. There we go. So what you would do is you would add those various devices, those various IP addresses for your different public IP address. You will notice I haven't specified a source. I've only specified the destination IP address, the port. The gateway is still my default gateway. And then I've saved those. Because of the one-to-one -one mappings, that handles the public IP address being mapped to the internal IP address. We only need to specify the rules so we have a list of what ports are being forwarded to which devices. So you can see here we've actually got port 80 which is configured um, to go to two separate devices because it's listening on two separate public IP addresses. Hit apply changes. Um, and that, my friends, concludes how you configure PFSense to work with multiple public IP addresses. Um, if you have any uh, requests or comments, please uh, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Um, feel free to, to drop me a message or, or whatever if you have any further questions or if you require any um, requests for like different PFSense guides, I'd be more than happy to help. Um, 
but that is how you configure PFSense to work with multiple public WAN IP addresses. And again, that's how I've configured this to work with me for my ISP. Um, purely depends on your needs and requirements, how your ISP routes your IP addresses to you, but this is the way that seems to work for me, and it seems to be quite effective. Thank you very much, and uh, hope you enjoyed this video.